One of the powerful things about objects in JavaScript is that they are mutable, meaning that they can change. However, this is also one of the dangerous features of JavaScript. There are times you want to make sure data on an object can't change, and there are a few ways to do that. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to add private data to a constructor, meaning that when an object is created from that constructor, the data can't be changed except on your terms. You may not want it changed at all, or you may want to control how it is changed. Now, the concept of constructors, prototypes, and closures are all referred to in this tutorial. If you need a refresher on any of these concepts, I've provided links to those tutorials in the description section of this movie at the bottom. So let's jump to Sublime and get started on this example. First, let's take a look at the code that I already have in here. So I've created an object using an object literal up here. This is going to become the prototype object for the constructor function I'm creating. This object simply has a greet function inside it and it logs to the console a greeting. That's all it does. Here's my constructor. Very simple. All we're doing is passing in a term and then setting that term to the greeting property of each object that is created. I then assign the prototype object up here to the greeting constructor. And then I've created one object. I passed in the term howdy for that object. Now, let's say I wanted to add some private data. Let's say, for example, I wanted to store when the object is created using a date object. And then perhaps at some point, I want to be able to manipulate that. But in this example, we'll simply store that date object in a way that prevents it from being changed. But other ways to use the same concept is you then can use functions to determine how that data is changed. You control it. Instead of, instead of someone having direct access to the property and being able to change it to whatever they want, including yourself, you can control how it is changed. And the way we do that is by creating a variable in the constructor. The variable is not accessible outside of the constructor. And then we create a function that has access to that variable. And the reason the function will have access to the variable is because when the constructor function executes, it creates closure around that variable. And therefore, the function we've created can still access it. So let's first create that variable. I'm going to declare it with var. We'll just call it priv for private. And then we'll, I'm going to set that equal to new date. So I'm creating a date object. Now, in order to be able to access that, I want to create a function on the objects that are created that can access that private data. So here's how we do that. In this simple example, I'm just going to have it return the variable. Now, this function will still be able to return this variable long after the object's been created because of closure. And the value of that variable will be the date that was created at the time the object was, was built. So just to test this out, let's create a second object. But I'm going to create this one using set timeout. Because I want the object to create be created sometime after the first object. And we'll do three seconds is all. So obj2 equals new greeting. And I'm going to pass in hi as the term. And then for set timeout, we have two parameters. We have a function that gets executed. And then the second parameter is the amount of time to wait until the function is executed. 
So 3,000 would be three seconds since we express that in milliseconds. All right, so there, there's two objects that are going to be created. Now let's add one more thing. Up here in the constructor function, I'm going to log to the console priv at the time the object is created. So we can see the, the date object that's been attached to it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save that. I'm gonna come back here, open the console, and I'm going to refresh it. Okay, so there's the first object, and it's created 44 seconds. This is the part we wanna pay attention to, 44 seconds and 47 seconds. Those are the two objects. So if I do obj1, and then I use the getPriv method for obj1, it returns this first value. Now, will obj2 return the second value? Yes, it does. So it retains a different value for that private data. Now, I can even take and create a second or a third object. Pass in hello this time. And now obj3.getPriv. And we can see the time that one was created, 238, exactly what it displayed. If we go back and look at obj1, it still retains the original value. And so there we've attached a value to an object I can't access that. There's no way I can go obj1.priv. It simply tells me it's undefined. I can't get to that to change it without using methods that I've created to do so. So therefore, it allows me to keep that data private, allows me to control how it is changed and only those functions have access to it as a result of closure. Now, one downside to this particular method of creating private data on a constructor is that the function that accesses the variable that we're holding private must be created on the object itself. It cannot be placed in the prototype. And that's because closure relies on the execution context of the function that is accessing it. And so it needs to be in the same execution context as the variable that we declare. So that's a downside, but it is still a very useful feature if you need to create private data in a constructor. I hope you found that helpful. If so, please like the video. You can view other videos from our YouTube channel by clicking the video link in the middle. To subscribe to our channel, click the circle link on the left. We have new videos every week. And to visit our website where we have courses and other resources on JavaScript, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.